We cannot sincerely trust those who have broken our trust since the beginning. Tonight, a Ganasatage territory dump may be leaking into the environment. The most important thing that we need to do for Albertans at this point is look at our health care. Plus, as Alberta's election looms, an Indigenous candidate throws her hat in the ring. To um, do the, correct the wrongs that's been done throughout the years, he has to uh, force this, uh, this Zufour to, to step down. And the Native Women's Association of Canada is calling for a Quebec politician to step down. Good evening, Tansi Anin. Welcome to APTN National News. I'm Daryl Stranger. APTN News has obtained a copy of a confidential summary report into allegations of harassment and wrongdoing by Assembly of First Nations National Chief Roseanne Archibald. The report says this summary was delivered to the Chiefs and Assembly on May the 18th of 2023. It is the result of a third-party investigation ordered in June of 2022 after the AFN Executive Committee tried to suspend Archibald. The investigation looked into five complaints by five different people, all who alleged the national chief engaged in, quote, workplace harassment and created a toxic or poisoned work environment. The report does not provide details of the allegations or findings for confidentiality purposes, other than to, quote, confirm the national chief's conduct amounted to harassment in two of the five reports. The investigation also found that Archibald breached the confidentiality of all five complainants, as well as reprisal. Quote, we conclude that by making statements that question the motives, intentions, and integrity of the staff members that have made complaints, and by making that suggestion in such a public venue, the respondent's conduct amounts to reprisal. Archibald made public statements about four staff in June and July of 2022, alleging they were trying to secure over a million dollars in contract payouts in an attempt to stop Archibald from uncovering wrongdoing within the AFN. The findings of reprisal for the fifth complaint were unique, as several accusations by Archibald emerged in more public settings. The investigation found Archibald also breached an AFN resolution when she put out a press release on April the 21st saying she was, quote, vindicated by the contents, unquote, of the investigation. The national chief was not made available for an interview. Employment lawyer Raquel Chisholm, a partner with Iman Hamden Law Firm in Ottawa, led the investigation. When asked about the summary, a spokesperson for Archibald said there was a more detailed report that largely vindicated the national chief. And we do hope to bring you more on this story. The Native Women's Association of Canada has added its voice to calls for Quebec Premier Francois Legault to fire a member of his government, Pierre Dufour. Dufour, a member of Quebec's National Assembly, attended a municipal council meeting in Val d'Or last week. During a discussion on homelessness, he brought up a 2015 report by Radio Canada, saying the broadcast's allegations of sexual and physical assaults against Indigenous women by police in that community was, quote, full of lies. Dufour has since apologized for his comments, but NMAC President Carol McBride says that isn't good enough. She says Legault must have Dufour resign. Well, to me, there's no two ways about it. The, if they want to keep their credibility, and if they want to keep their credibility by saying that they're they're willing to um, do correct the wrongs that's been done throughout the years, he has to uh, force this uh, this Zufour to to step down. A recycling dump on Ganasatage territory has reportedly been leaking toxins into the environment. The Mohawk Nation has entered into talks with the federal government to do something, but this week residents demonstrated in front of the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations Montreal office to keep the pressure on. Here's Lindsay Richardson with more. A literal ping pong game outside of Mark Miller's office staged to denounce a political one. 
passing of responsibility on the issue of illegal toxic dumping in a Mohawk community 30 kilometers outside Montreal. We remain skeptical as to whether or not this purported concern is a genuine commitment to understanding and addressing the issues we have faced as a community for over three decades now. Blue is the assumed name of the group's appointed spokesperson. The others present have self-identified as Gunazadage members, but are not speaking out on the issue of the GNR dump over fear of reprisals. We cannot sincerely trust those who have broken our trust since the beginning. Solutions can only be achieved through the creation of a safe and secure space where people can speak freely without violence of fear or intimidation issue, the GNR recycling plant, which began operating in Gunnazadage back in 2011 and was ordered by the province to cease operations back in 2020. The dump reportedly accepted too much toxic waste, contaminating nearby groundwater. The garbage dumped in the community doesn't necessarily come from the community. Former Grand Chief Serge Simon says only outside parties have the power to stop it. It's really uh, disheartening because at the time, I fought like crazy. I think uh, my biggest uh, my biggest failure was not fighting hard enough. And, you know, the situation caught up to us so quickly. We had no idea what they were doing until it was too late. Gunasadage's ban council could not be reached before deadline. The neighboring community of Oka, however, asked the provincial government to intervene. Quebec's Indigenous Affairs, in turn, says they've kicked the GNR issue up to the feds and had a productive talk with Indigenous Services Canada. But at Tuesday's demonstration, this federal NDP member of parliament claims Canada has been aware for a while. We wrote to Minister Gilbo in, in March. He said, oh, uh, we are aware, but we cannot do anything. Uh, and they say, oh, but it's Quebec government, and Quebec government is saying it's a federal government. And during that time, people are suffering there. And this is really environmental racism, and this is something that is called colonialism that still exists uh, here. Meanwhile... Uh, there will be actions every week dramatizing the situation and showing the situation in Ganesatagi to decision makers. There is also the trilateral meeting coming ahead, and we hope that concrete announcements for directly consulting the community will come out of it. A trilateral meeting is planned between Canada, Quebec, and Gunnazadage to discuss next steps, and this group hopes to stop passing the ball. Lindsay Richardson, APTN National News, Montreal. All right, we have to pause our program for just a moment. We'll have more news when we come back. Welcome back to APTN National News. An art display on the steps of the Vancouver Art Gallery has now been removed two years after the discovery of the 215 suspected unmarked graves in Kamloops. As APTN's Tina House tells us, there's a lot of mixed emotion. When news of the suspected unmarked graves was announced at the former Kamloops Indian Residential School back in May of 2021, the immense grief and sadness was felt around the world. These children's empty shoes became the way to remember. The display was set up in June of 2021 by Haida artist Tamara Bell, whose late mother attended residential school. She says she knew she had to do something. She came here to the Vancouver Art Gallery steps and placed some shoes. Others soon joined her from all different nations. It was so emotional because it was you know, I didn't, I really didn't know what else to do. I, I'm still hurt by all of this stuff. I'm still hurt for our people. You know, people come and they still talk to me about residential school and, you know, and how much pain they have and, and how much we need to do and how much healing we have to do with not only the trauma of residential school, but the intergenerational trauma. Since the memorial started nearly two years ago, thousands of people have walked by and saw the signs and shoes. Bell says many of those non-Indigenous people walking by learned about the horrors of the residential school legacy because of the display. However, the host First Nations in Vancouver do not support the memorial as strict protocol was not followed. Bell says she meant no disrespect to the nations and says she only intended the art display to honour children who went to the schools. She says she did reach out to some elders for guidance. 
In late March, the city of Vancouver, who was supported by the three host First Nations, decided it was time to remove the memorial. And today, city workers are here to take everything away. They sent APTN this statement. The city acknowledges that there is still a need for mourning and healing spaces. While the temporary memorial cannot remain at Robson Square, the city is committed to continuing work with the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations and urban Indigenous communities to create spaces in the public realm for this purpose. For Desiree Simeon, who has lived on the site in this teepee with her son and cared for the memorial for two years, says it's sad it's coming down. I feel that this is genocide all over again after 500 years. Tina House, APTN National News, Vancouver. Alberta's provincial election is coming up on May 29th, and Indigenous candidates are in the running. APTN's Chris Stewart spoke to NDP candidate Jody Calhoun Stonehouse, who was vying for the seat in Edmonton Rutherford. Here's that feature report. Jody Calhoun Stonehouse is Cree and Mohawk from the Michelle First Nation in Alberta. The former director of the Yellowhead Indigenous Education Foundation is also a radio host and film and television producer. Now the single mother is running for the NDP in the riding of Edmonton Rutherford, the seat of the retiring Richard Fian, who was the Alberta Indigenous Relations Minister and later the Indigenous Relations Critic when the UCP came to power in 2019. APTN caught up to her at her campaign office. She shares with another NDP candidate. We asked what are the most important issues to her. The most important thing that we need to do for Albertans at this point is look at our health care. We have a mess. We need to make sure that people have access to doctors, to you know, doing blood work when they need blood work done, seeing physicians. There is so much work to do in health care. And then, of course, education is just as important to us. And, you know, disaster response. On the same night, NDP and UCP leaders Rachel Notley and Daniel Smith debated. Jody Callahue Stonehouse debated her opponents as well. There were about 150 folks who came out to sit and hear our positions on education, on health care, on balancing the budget. And so there were some really tough but critical questions that we need to be able to answer to our constituents. And uh, it was wonderful to see all the folks show up. Callahue Stonehouse says she and the NDP will do things differently from the UCP. The NDP will do many things differently. One is that uh, all Albertans matter when we look at affordability, not just a few. We want to make sure that all single parents, mums and dads, citizens have, you know, can, are able to pay their bills. Uh, utilities are astronomically high for many people. We want to make sure that people can afford where they live, they can go to school, they have groceries in their fridge. This day, Jody, her volunteers, and supporter, actress Georgina Lightning, are in the streets asking for support and reminding them to vote and that early voting is available. Jody tells a story of meeting an 82 year old who voted UCP all his life. It's sad when people have believed in something their entire lives and it's changed on them. They cannot rely on the Conservative government to look after them. And so he said, for the first time ever in my life, I will vote NDP. I will vote for you, Jody. Chris yeah, Stewart, APTN get, uh, National News, Edmonton. In Saskatchewan, the Saskatoon Food Bank says financial pressure is driving up use, and as budgets are crunched, more people are relying on its resources. Use is up by 35% since this time last year. Increases in rent have also contributed to more people using the food bank as budgets are stretched. Director of Operations and Engagement Deborah Hamp says less donations are coming in as financial resources are crunched. She called on more people to donate food or money directly at the food bank or by giving to grocery store collection bins. Hamp says right now many factors like people having to repay pandemic era government benefits are contributing to less donations and more clients. This month in the month of May, is our citywide food drive. And so typically we would have a high number of um, prepackaged bags coming in from grocers. We're not seeing that this, this month and it's very concerning because our usage is up, you know, nearly to 24,000 people a month. And um, the, it's the highest numbers that we've ever seen in the history of the food bank. 
All right, we need to step aside for a final break. You'll want to stick around, though, for our photo of the day coming up next. Welcome back. It's time now for our photo of the day. Sandra Seidel was able to photograph a rather uncommon occurrence, the northern lights so clearly visible from within the city of Winnipeg. This was right from her own backyard. It's a great photo there, Sandra. You can send your great photos to share at aptn.ca for the chance to be featured as our next photo of the day. All right, now let's take a look at tomorrow's weather forecast. Starting on the East Coast, 11 degrees in St. John's and 13 in Halifax. 12 degrees in Kujawak and 12 in Happy Valley Goose Bay. 9 degrees in Quebec City and 16 in Clear in Val d'Or. 16 in Clear in Toronto and 16 in North Bay. 14 in Wawa and 22 in Sioux Lookout. 17 degrees in Churchill and 20 degrees in Norway House. Barron's River is looking at 19 degrees and Winnipeg is looking at 19 degrees. 25 and some showers in Regina and 17 in showers in Saskatoon. 19 degrees in Buffalo Narrows and 22 in Stony Rapids. As we make our way west, 19 in Fort Chippewan and 19 in Grand Prairie. 18 degrees in Edmonton and 18 in Calgary. 22 degrees in Vancouver and 26 in Bella Coola. 15 in Prince Rupert and 25 in Fort Nelson. Beaver Creek's looking at showers in 16 and showers in 16 in Mayo. 21 in Norman Wells and 25 in Fort Liard. 13 degrees in Colville Lake and 3 in Inuvik. Minus 5 in Cambridge Bay and 0 in Baker Lake. Minus 6 in Arctic Bay and 1 degree in Iqaluit. As we continue with our current affairs shows wrapping up for the season, today it's APTN In Focus's turn and with our season finale, we do a look back at some of our favorite interviews from the year. We've taken the show on the road a few times and here is when we went to Hollow Water First Nation in Manitoba and checked out Camp Morningstar. My understanding, you'll take a tie, you'll go in the bush and you'll pick a tree and you'll tie it like I have I taught you to tie it by your eyes, the level of your eyes, all right? Uh, for me, it's been something that's really unique. I've never really been ex able to experience something like this before. Through school, especially before I went to Tech Vok, there weren't a lot of uh, indigenous people around me in my life. So coming here and having this opportunity has really been uh, eye-opening, learning things that I've never really learned about from people that are way more experienced than any teachers I've ha been able to have at school talk about things. When I, when I learned about it in school, it's kind of just someone who was reading out of a textbook, right? They don't really know what they're talking about. But when I come experience it here, it's someone that actually knows what they're talking about. They live the life that they talk about. And, you know, it's just really interesting for me, someone that doesn't really come from that background to just learn about the background of tons of my friends. Um, I have a grandmother who grew up on hollow water, and she lived there her whole life pretty much. And I never had that experience at all, and, like definition of whitewash. So I just wanted to, you know, have that experience and just to say that I came out here and lived learned a little bit and I don't know just kind of got the experience that she had in a way. So what have you learned in, in the short time that you've been here? Uh, community means a lot here for sure and I learned just about being thankful and grateful for what you have. Winnipeg's Glitterati was out in full force last night for the premiere of the six-part series Little Bird set to air on Crave and APTN Lumi. The first episode of the series was showcased. APTN's Leanne Sanders was there and brings us this story. Little Bird Episode 1 opens with an idyllic prairie scene, an Indigenous family enjoying their morning on a reserve in 1968 Saskatchewan. It ends with the heart-wrenching scenes of a little girl being taken from her family. The series was co-created by Hannah Moscovich and Jennifer Pademski. Podemski explains the premise of the story. This series is about um, a woman who was abducted from her family during the 60s scoop and it's her 
returning home story, her reclamation of her identity story. It's her finding where she belongs story while celebrating this um, very untold version of Indigenous love and Indigenous families and celebrating home in, through an Indigenous lens. The historical scenes are interspersed with more modern scenes from 1985, when the main character, Esther Rosenblum, first learned she came from an Indigenous family. Darla Contois so plays I Esther. I mean, it's obviously a very sentimental, touching, um, personal story when it comes to the lives of Indigenous people. So for me, it feels like very powerful and very strong and very... Um, very rooted in community to be able to finally share those stories with Canadians and with people all over the world. To be the star of a TV series as an Indigenous woman from a reserve, I never thought that was possible. So it just feels incredible to be like living your dreams. You know what I mean? Like it's surreal. Veteran actress and activist Michelle Thrush plays an important role in the series. I feel like we are in a time of just absolute mass absorbing truth. And this is a part of it. It's a really important time for Indigenous people because so much is coming up right now. And as an artist, I always say that we bring light to the darkness. That's our jobs as artists. And I feel like this is something, not to say that the scoop was ever in the dark, but with Canada in general, we are bringing light to a very important subject. Episode 1 streams Friday, May 26th on Crave and APTN Lumi in English and French. The other five episodes drop every Friday after that. Leanne Sanders, APTN National News, Winnipeg. Certainly look forward to that. And we have some sad news coming to us from the world of pop culture. The grand icon Tina Turner has died at the age of 83. Turner died peacefully after a long illness in her home near Zurich, Switzerland. Turner, often called the queen of rock and roll, was one of the biggest recording artists of all time and a defining pop icon of the 1980s. She's known for her smash hits like Proud Mary, What's Love Got to Do With It, and Simply the Best. Turner was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2021. An orange jingle dress created to share stories of intergenerational healing is on display at the Canadian Museum for Human Rights in Winnipeg and it will be there until August. Amanda Greaves of Bonabonabi Cree Nation is the designer behind the dress. It was inspired by the discovery of unmarked graves across the country. She initially created it for her daughter who is a jingle dress dancer. The TP in the design represents home and the love that comes from it. The children on the dress show the innocence that was taken by colonialism, but also the resiliency moving forward. Dwelling on the past, we want to move forward in, 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 in a good way, in a healthy way, right? By forgiving ourselves and reaching out for help and, and moving forward. That's what, that's what the dress is all about, working together for our children. All right, that is all we have for you tonight on APTN National News. If you missed anything from tonight's show, our website, aptnnews.ca, has you covered. For all of us here, thank you so much for joining us. Miigwech, Kinnanaskamitin, and have a great night.